It's increasingly clear that artificial intelligence is going to have a hugely disruptive effect on the tax profession. As a tax leader, what do you need to know about artificial intelligence and what should you be preparing for as you ready yourself for the future of tax? To help address these questions, I'm joined today by Ben Allery. Ben is a professor of tax law at the University of Toronto, where he holds the Osler Chair in Business Law. He's the co-founder and CEO of BlueJay, a technology company that is at the forefront of applying AI to the tax profession. Ben, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. At KPMG, when we think about the impact of tools like AI, we, we tend to think about making our business a smart person plus data and technology business, rather than eliminating the human in the loop. So I think about tools like ChatGPT as moving from using a typewriter to a word processor. So massive increase in efficiency, but all of the value is still added by the person in the loop. As an artificial intelligence expert, would you share that viewpoint? How do you see that shaking out in the tax profession? I absolutely share that viewpoint that technology plus people will produce better answers than, than people uh, on their own. And a really nice example of this comes out of my teaching at the law school at the University of Toronto. Uh, I've, for the past several years, I've encouraged my students to use AI in producing their academic work. And so originally that involved using BlueJay in producing uh, answers to their tax exams, for example. More recently with the introduction of ChatGPT beginning this past semester, I've encouraged my students to use large language models to use ChatGPT to inform their academic work. And the results are very interesting. The students really enjoy using large language models. They're learning about the limitations of these systems. They're learning about where the strengths of those systems are. In my grading of the student's work product, what I'm seeing is the top half of the class are producing work that's as excellent as it's ever been in the past. And, and so it's not better, it's certainly not any weaker. What's really been the, the clearest outcome is that the bottom 10% of the class has really elevated their work and they're, they're becoming indistinguishable from the middle of the class. So it's been an elevation of the bottom of the class into the middle of the class. And I think what, what has happened in the past is the bottom 10% of the class, uh, we're just leaving everything to the last minute and we're, we're not producing uh, the effort necessary to, to, to generate really excellent academic work. Now leveraging ChatGPT, leveraging technology, it makes it a lot faster to produce high quality academic work. And so it's, it's, it's great from the instructor perspective. I think also it's advancing our pedagogical goals at the law school because our students are having interactions with ChatGPT, with large language models, with these AI systems that is encouraging them to explore the, the intellectual space in ways that um, before they, they might have reached an intellectual impasse and, and they're breaking through those impasses now and in, in producing excellent work. That's fascinating. So I think it's also really analogous to how we, we want to use technology. It's, it's elevating what your students are doing. Mm -hmm. It's actually making them happier because they're concentrating more on the value add. But critically, you have proven effectively that the top percentage of your students are adding a lot more value over the use of, of AI tools. Absolutely. I think one of the things that, that I suspect is true, and it's anecdotally true in speaking with my, my top students, is that it's taking less time to produce that academic work of a really high quality, and they really are enjoying it. Just to echo back to you the, the point that you just made, they really are enjoying it, and, and they're producing excellent work, and they're proud of it, and they're proud of what they've learned as a result of interacting with these systems. So I, I regard it as a, as a win for, for everybody. So for tax leaders, they should be looking at this as a way of enhancing the talent in their organization and actually freeing people up to do more interesting work rather than as something that's, that's coming for people's jobs. I think that's really interesting. Um, I think then we've mentioned BlueJay a couple of times now. It would be really good to give a bit of context. Could you give a bit of backstory to BlueJay and why did you decide to apply AI to tax? There's a long story that we could get into. I'm not, I'm not going to give you the long version. I'll give you the short version. Uh, Blue Jay is coming out of my, my role as an academic administrator at, at the law school at the University of Toronto as associate dean. I wanted to improve the way that we deliver a legal education at the University of Toronto. And the last major reform to a legal education was done several decades ago at, at the law school. And 
with that in mind, I thought what we need to do is if we're going to change the curriculum, we need to future-proof it. And that to me led down the path of thinking, well, we need to make sure that it, it survives the coming technological shifts. And back in 2014, I saw that we're seeing increased computing power, increased availability of digital data, uh, improvement in algorithms, there's a ton of research happening at the University of Toronto by individuals like Jeff Hinton, who, who's credited with inventing deep learning. And so I thought, okay, law is all fundamentally about prediction. Prediction technologies are gonna become much more efficacious in the coming years. We need to do something about that for the curriculum, but also there's, there's something that needs to be done more generally in the industry to create predictive technology for tax and for law more generally. And that, that spurred the development of BlueJay. And now, several years later, we've got dozens of these predictive models throughout Canadian tax law. We've done the same thing for the US tax system. And now I'm really happy to be working with KPMG and, and producing these kinds of predictive models for the UK tax system. And we're thrilled, obviously, with the output that we've had from producing those, those UK predictors. We're, we're really pleased with how, how applicable that's been to the UK, the UK law. One thing that, um, that we've observed in tax technology is um, that often the innovation model that you traditionally think of, private sector drives innovation, public sector tries to catch up, is actually flipped on its head. If we think about digitization of tax, it's often the authorities setting the agenda. Are you seeing a similar result in AI? The experience at Blue Jay absolutely tracks what you're describing about uh, digitization in the public sector. And so when we started Blue Jay back in 2015, we, we originally started uh, experimenting with, with some of the, the leading professional services firms, um, principally in Toronto. And that was very quickly um, heard about in Ottawa. And in Ottawa, uh, folks in government started becoming quite interested in, in what we were doing and, and started to um, adopt these tools on a pilot basis and explore them and, and see what are the advantages for tax administration, what are the advantages for tax litigation from the government's perspective. And all this is a matter of the public record. Uh, but what was really interesting is the private sector started experimenting. The public sector said, oh, we must experiment as well. But then when the private sector learned that the public sector was experimenting with these technologies, also that fostered increasing adoption. And, and game theoretically, it's, it's a bit of an arms race because both sides are really trying to understand deeply what the tax law requires. And, and we're providing a technological way for them to leverage AI and machine learning to inform that analysis. And it's valuable. Uh, to both sides, but for sure the public sector has played a really vital role in that adoption. But the message then probably to UK tax leaders would be, you're, you're in that arms race too, you need to be leaning into the benefits of artificial intelligence if you're not going to be left behind what the authorities are doing. I, I completely agree. Okay. Um, thinking, thinking a bit more to the future then, we've seen a great success in Canada with the, the current version of Blue Jay. we've used it in the UK to great success, but what do you see what do you see next? What's ChatGPT going to do to, to this type of space? ChatGPT and other large language models are, are going to really, really do exciting things for tax technology, for the adoption of AI in the tax system. I think one thing that is very close to, to coming to market, it's something we're working on at BlueJay, we're calling it Ask BlueJay. It's leveraging these models in order to provide answers to, to virtually any tax question. I think where this leads to is public sector testing and hardening of tax law. So I think we're gonna see a massive proliferation in tax legislation. If, if a government is trying to harden the tax system, that means only one thing, it means more tax law. So we're gonna see more legislation, greater regulation, uh, a, a, you know, a massive proliferation in mechanisms to harden tax law, which is going to mean that it, everything becomes much more complex, much more deeply specified. That's going to require the second thing, which is a, you know much better technology for coping with this complexity. So you can use, if you're a tax authority, if you're a government, you can use AI to identify vulnerabilities in your tax law, shore them up, patch them with new legislation. If you're a tax professional, you're looking for vulnerabilities in the tax code. You're trying to identify strategies that are maybe novel, those things that haven't quite been patched yet by the tax authorities. I, I think we see broader multilateral efforts to combat tax avoidance like BEPS. I think BEPS is just 
you know, the very, you know, base level of this, we're going to see a lot more um, hardening of, of tax systems. A lot of it will be multilateral, a lot will be unilateral, domestic, patching anti-avoidance rules, specific anti-avoidance rules. I think both of those phenomena lead to this conclusion that's inexorable that a tax professional is going to have to leverage these kinds of technologies, Ask Blue Jay, Chat GPT, um, AI generally in order to inform the advice that they're giving to their clients. Otherwise, it, it'll be just far too difficult to keep up with all of the new uh, tax law that's coming out. So we're almost back to the arms race. The, the authorities will be using tools like Blue Jay to enhance the legislation, leading to an increase in complexity. On the other side of the fence, we'll have tax functions almost automating tax planning through, through tools like Blue Jay. I think, I think the automated tax planning is absolutely a, a prediction. There's a big debate, even internally at Blue Jay now, whether we're 18 months away from that or 20 years away from that, and, and their views right along the spectrum. And I think they're mirroring the more general debates that are happening in technology circles by folks who are really deep into AI. Some AI people are saying, you know, with, with the, the rapid improvement from GPT-2 to GPT-3 to GPT-3.5 to GPT-4, and people are anticipating GPT-5, that things are very, very quickly accelerating to very high levels of performance. Some people are saying, okay, you know, if, if this improvement continues exponentially, it, we could in the near term be facing down the prospect of completely automated tax advice. Wow. So maybe to clarify some of that timing point, ask Blue Jay leveraging chat GPT, which is obviously a lot newer. Have you reached that point yet? Are you confident it's going to work? I, I'm, what makes me very excited is uh, our head of legal research at, at Blue Jay is a former branch chief for the IRS. And so she's based in the Washington DC area. And she was at the IRS for 13 years and joined Blue Jay last year because she's very excited about the prospects of using technology to improve tax understanding. She's extremely excited about Ask Blue Jay. She was testing it just last week and she's testing it by asking questions that she's very familiar with as, as a longtime uh, IRS leader. And she had this experience where she asked Blue Jay a question about a very specific and, and technical tax issue. She, she got the answer from Blue Jay and she read it and it said exactly what she expected it to say, but then it tacked on at the end a bit about there being an exception in a particular private letter ruling that Susan wasn't familiar with. And she was cautious because she thought maybe, maybe Blue Jay is hallucinating and that's what some of these large language models will do. They will make stuff up, they will hallucinate, they'll just create something. And so she, she looked at this exception and said, I better check this out. And so she looked up the private letter ruling that it's referred to, it's a genuine private letter ruling. And lo and behold, there is buried in this private letter ruling that particular exception that Susan wasn't familiar with. And she, she was over the moon with <laughs> this outcome because now she's, she is learning as somebody who's very expert in the field. And she was asking a question that was kind of like one of her questions that she was the most expert in the world and she's now learning from Ask Blue Jay. So there are signs that this kind of technology is, is very soon gonna be ready for the prime time and adding real value to tax professionals. So a lot of my excitement is, is informed by general trends, but also the specific experience that we're having in using this technology uh, in Blue Jay, and we're really excited to bring it to market. So we're almost saying the future of tax and tools like Ask Blue Jay, they're, they're here now. People need to work out how they're going to cope Absolutely. with that disrupting the function. And I guess that probably brings me on to my final question. The tax professional of the future who's using these tools, are they going to need to understand the mechanics? Are they going to need to understand how artificial intelligence works? Or is it more akin to driving a car, they, they gas it up and they go? I think it's going to be much more akin to, to gassing a car and, and going. They need to understand generally where they're going and, and how they're trying, how they're, they mean to get there. Uh, but it's really incumbent on automobile manufacturers and software providers to make the technology easy to use, easy to understand, easy to leverage, make it fit for purpose for those professionals to, to get in the car and drive the, the tax advice forward. And so uh, I think the usability thing is extremely important. I do not counsel for tax professionals to go out and start taking 
coding program, uh, coding classes and, and learn how to code in Python. I don't think that's necessary. I think tax professionals should be open to leveraging technology to improve their tax advice. And, and I think it's, it's incumbent on the, the tech providers to make the technology easy enough to use that tax professionals who are open to it can readily adopt it. But maybe the, the closing message for tax leaders would be that those tax leaders who don't adopt artificial intelligence are going to be at a significant disadvantage to their peers because not only are the public authorities going to be adopting it, but the private sector is going to be adopting those tools and that's going to lead to an explosion in complexity in tax that actually you'll need to be armed with artificial intelligence in order to cope with. 100%. I think tax professionals who use AI technology are going to replace tax professionals who don't. Fascinating. Well, that's been really interesting for me. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much for joining us, Ben.